The male urinary system is made up of the kidneys, which produce urine. The ureters, connecting the kidneys to the bladder, where urine is stored. And the urethra, the exit passageway from the bladder. The male genital system begins with the two testes, where sperm are produced. The epididymis is a system of convoluted small tubes leading from each testis and emptying into the vas deferens. After being joined by the duct of the seminal vesicles, the vas becomes the ejaculatory duct, which enters the prostate, where it joins with the urethra to convey the sperm, contained in semen, to the penis. The, the walnut-sized prostate gland is situated just beneath the bladder and encircles the upper part of the urethra. It secretes alkaline fluid rich in enzymes and prostaglandins. This secretion is important to the survival and performance of the sperm. The seminal vesicles also play an important role in contributing secretions which enhance the sperm's chance of success. During ejaculation, the connection between bladder and urethra is closed, while the prostate, seminal vesicles, urethra, and the penis all undergo rhythmical contraction, moving forward the semen, which is composed of sperm plus secretions from the prostate, seminal vesicles, and minor glands. The aging male is prone to develop enlargement of the prostate, known as benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH. The prostate contains numerous small glands which secrete into the urethra, and muscle fibers and connective tissue. In benign prostatic hyperplasia, all of these elements increase, resulting in enlargement of the prostate gland. The first changes in BPH involve proliferation of glandular tissue in the area known as the transitional zone. This is the area immediately surrounding the urethra. New cells are constantly being formed by division. Room has to be made for these new cells by a special process of programmed cell death known as apoptosis, so that in normal health, the number of cells being produced is balanced by the number of cells disappearing through apoptosis. Impairment of apoptosis is thought to be an important factor in causing benign prostatic hyperplasia. As the prostate enlarges, it compresses and distorts that part of the urethra which passes through it, causing disruption to the normal flow of urine. Drugs used in treating benign prostatic hyperplasia act in one of two ways. They either reduce the intensity of androgenic stimulation, or they relax overactive muscles at the base of the bladder and surrounding the proximal urethra. When epithelial cells multiply excessively in either benign conditions such as BPH or in carcinoma of the prostate, they may release excessive amounts of a glycoprotein called prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, into the circulation. Treatment of BPH with drugs which reduce androgenic stimulation tend to lower blood levels of PSA, while treatment with alpha-adrenergic blocking drugs has no effect on the blood level of PSA. The use of anti-androgen drugs is based on the concept that benign prostatic hyperplasia is caused by excessive androgen stimulation. Testosterone is normally converted to its more active metabolite 5-alpha-dihydrotestosterone, DHT. This requires the participation of the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. Drugs which block the action of this enzyme slow down the conversion of testosterone to DHT, and so the androgenic stimulation is reduced. The prostate tends to regress in size. Symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia may also be caused by overactivity of the muscles surrounding the exit of the urethra from the bladder and the prostatic urethra itself. These muscles normally receive impulses from sympathetic nerves which release norepinephrine, causing contraction. Alpha-adrenergic blocking drugs compete with norepinephrine for attachment to receptors in the muscle fibers at the base of the bladder muscle and in the wall of the urethra. This lessens spasm and encourages muscular relaxation. 
One theory is that alpha adrenergic blocking drugs may also encourage apoptosis in the glandular cells of the prostate in men with BPH, tending to restore the balance between new cell production and old cell disappearance. In carcinoma of the prostate, the growth and multiplication of cells escapes from normal control. In addition, there is impairment of apoptosis, the important process of programmed cell death, which normally regulates cell numbers. Carcinoma of the prostate usually begins in the peripheral zone, unlike benign prostatic hyperplasia, which most often starts in the transitional zone, around the prostatic urethra. Unlike the situation in benign prostatic hyperplasia, where cell multiplication is much more controlled, in prostate carcinoma, the malignant cells multiply out of control, begin to invade the stroma, the connective tissue of the prostate, and extend beyond it to the surrounding structures such as the seminal vesicles. Having breached the capsule, the tumor is now able to spread more widely. Malignant cells may invade the lymphatic system, traveling to regional lymph nodes, and then onto the liver and or lungs. If the tumor cells enter the bloodstream, they may also be carried to the bones, as well as the liver and lungs. Benign prostatic hyperplasia may cause lower urinary tract symptoms, or LUTs. These include problems with voiding, such as hesitating and starting to urinate, a reduction in the stream, a feeling that the bladder has not completely emptied with urination, and dribbling after urination. Nocturia, or increased frequency of urination at night, causing the person to get up more than once during the night, is another common symptom and may seriously interfere with sleep. Sometimes, despite frequent urination, the bladder may not empty completely, causing a large post-void residual urinary problem. This situation requires intervention to avoid problems associated with urinary retention, such as increased risk of infection, bladder stone formation, or cancer development. There may also develop storage problems due to irritation of muscles of the bladder wall and muscles surrounding the proximal urethra, causing the person to urinate more frequently. So, in summary, there are now two major classes of drug used in treating benign prostatic hyperplasia. These are the alpha-adrenergic blocking drugs which counter the symptoms caused by irritation and the drugs which reduce androgenic stimulation. As each of these classes of drug works in a different manner, if necessary, they can be used together. The greater the degree of prostatic enlargement, the more effective a 5-alpha reductase drug is likely to be. These drugs may not only reduce the symptoms of benign prostatic hyperplasia, but they may inhibit further prostatic enlargement by antagonizing androgen stimulation in the case of the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors and by restoring prostatic epithelial apoptosis in the case of the alpha-adrenergic blockers.